So another formation that defenses can't defend. It's a three by one formation and I call it tray open. The reason I call it tray open <clears throat> is that there's a Y in the formation and then tray means three. So there's three receivers to a side with a Y, a tight end, in that trips formation. Okay? So even though I have this labeled as a W, it's a tight end, I just, anytime I used a tight end, he would have run the W routes. So this W stands for my tight end, and the tight end would know he's taking over the W routes. If I was in a, a three by one spread, the W would be outside, and that would be a receiver, and he would run the W routes. So that's the only reason that you'll see on this board the tight end is labeled as a W, all right? The reason I call it tray open is because the three receivers with the tight end and then open means this is the X is split out. It's a split end receiver. If this was a tight end on the back side, then I would call it tray tight. So that's just my nomenclature for the way that, that I call the formation. And if I was going to play defense and I was scouting this formation, that's what I would, would label it. Okay? So let's take a look at how Trey Open is a formation defense can defend because we have the three quadrants that we're going to assess in four different coverages that they could play against our formation. All right? So first one is 4-3 cover two. And in cover two, if you look at the left quadrant, and if you're familiar with how I do this, I draw a line straight down the outside of the tackle and straight down the outside of the tight end, and then I separate that into three quadrants, the left pass side, the run box, and the right pass side. And we evaluate the numbers, okay? And if we look at this, in cover two, we'll be one-on-one -on -one with our X receiver in the left pass quadrant. In the run game, we're gonna be eight on eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and the free safety is sitting on the hash, so that's eight on eight. Now you might say, well, the quarterback really you can't count as eight on eight. If you're gonna run him, then yes you can because the running back can block the guy. So if we don't run him, then it's seven on eight. But we still like those numbers in the run game because what, we, what I've said to my running back is, look, there's times where we may not block a guy and you've gotta run him over or make a move and make him miss and get us four or five yards. So we're okay with these kind of numbers, knowing that the eighth guy is really a secondary player that has to come up on run support, okay? If we look over here to the trip side, what we have, if you just evaluate the two, the, the slot and the outside receiver, it's two on two, okay? When we add the tight end and it, it, to the receiver possibilities, it becomes three on three, because the Sam linebacker cover two is sitting inside the tight end, all right? Now, one of the things about playing cover two is in putting the Sam inside is, normally, as you'll see in these other formations, this defensive end would be a seven technique, and you put the Sam outside. The problem with that in cover two is, if you do that, you are allowing this tight end to free release up the field on an inside route. And that's a really easy thing for the quarterback to do a play action and basically do what's called tight end dump, which pretty much everybody would have in any formation that they run. So I believe that in cover two, this defense has to have a way or has to have trained the defensive end to be able to play a nine technique outside so the Sam linebacker can be inside in a true cover two alignment, all right? You'll notice that in cover two, this corner, I'm backed him off because most of the time in my experience when you play trips to the field, this corner backs off and plays inside because he has the boundary as a help. And, and so he's not sitting outside here at five yards with his rear turn to the sideline uh, as you would normally see if it was uh, either ball in the middle of the field or he was a boundary corner like this corner, okay? So we still like this, whether it's two on two or three on three, we like the opportunity 
to throw to the field, to throw to the boundary, and run. So this is cover against cover two. We like all these areas to be able to attack. All right? If we come down here to cover three, then what you see happen is we now lose the pass side to the boundary because the wheel linebacker walks out and it becomes one on two. All right? So in essence, what's happened is the mics move and the wheel have moved out so that there's somebody covering this short zone area over here into the boundary. All right? Um, they still can play and cover, cover three. They can play the seven technique here because what happens is, is in cover three, the tight end releases, but you have a safety that's sitting right inside the, uh, the seam route to cover the tight end if he wants to run up the seam. And then you also, in cover three, this same linebacker, once he gets run or pass, he can go help wall. So in essence, you almost have two people playing that tight end, which in my opinion is a good thing because that when you put a tight end in here, they really threatens the middle of the field and then either running the dig or a 10 yard square out to either side is really advantageous when you put a tight end in there. Because if you look up here and this tight end releases inside and he runs a 10 yard square out, he runs a dig or a seam, that's extremely difficult for, for them to cover that in cover two. Okay? So in cover three, they put the, the, the safety in the middle of the field. They now have two players playing these underneath zones as opposed to when you look over at cover two, you can see that we have this box right here that's wide open that we could get any one of these receivers into this box to be able to influence and attack the defense there. All right? So we can also win the run game here at seven on six. In the pass game, we don't really have numbers. If we just look at these two, it's three on two. When you add the third receiver, the tight end, and you add the Sam, it becomes four, one, two, three, four on three. So cover three, it basically limits us. We can throw against it, but we don't really have the numbers in either of the pass zones, but we have a good numbers in the run, run box. All right? If we come over to cover four, then what we see here is we have one on one on the X receiver. We will be seven on seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, and then this safety is playing over top of the tight end, so we know that he could help in the run, uh, uh, to, to cover the run fairly quickly. And then so, but we still have numbers in the run game that we like, taking into account we're not gonna run the quarterback. And then you come over here to the pass, and if we look at these two, you've got three on two, so that's not as good to throw against. If we add the tight end, then you've got four on three, and then even if the tight end to re were to release up the field, they could pretty much make this five on three because the Mike linebacker has the opportunity once he gets a pass read to be able to go over and wall the tight end. Okay? So um, what we see that is that in cover four and cover three, there's a better opportunity for them to take away the tight end in terms of the pass game which is why you see the X here on the field side. All right? This, the last coverage is cover one. We know cover one, everything's man-to-man. -man, so we like the fact that we're one-on-one, -on -one, our X versus their corner. We like the fact that the same linebacker is now playing the tight end. The strong safety's man on the, on the B on the slot. And then the, the corner's man on our wide receiver, number one to the field. And we know that in cover one, this safety can only help on one of these three guys. So we have an opportunity with this being two on two or three on three, knowing that we can read where the safety is and who he's going to help on, and we can throw the other two guys open with regard to that. In the box, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, so it, it, we have seven in the box. And we like our numbers because we have six and a ball carrier and a quarterback. So we can say that it's seven on seven and we're in good shape with the run game. So even if they play cover one, we really don't have an issue with being able to attack all three areas. All right? So what this tray open does is it, it gives us an opportunity to assess the coverages and the areas that we would like to attack. Okay? Notice that in cover two, 
we like all three areas. So what happens is when you when you put a three by one formation up, it it allows the defense to, to have to make a decision on how they want to play this three receiver side. And particularly when you put the tight end in here and you know that he can get to the middle of the field pretty quickly, that he can get right in this area and he can get in this box. He can get into these two open areas really quickly. It makes them have to decide, hey, cover two might not be the best option for us to play. Okay? So what we found is that just in our own defensive uh, scheme is we would play cover three against any three receiver set. And so that would allow us, because you'll notice here that really the only thing we have if they want to, is the run game. If we're going to throw to the field, they have numbers, and if we're going to throw to the boundary, they have numbers. So against the tray open set or any three receiver set, it really behooves them to play cover three. But the question becomes, do they have the ability and have they practiced going from cover two to cover three? Well, here's how we handled that. We played, and this is the reason you see this, okay? We played a right corner, and I'm talking now looking at it from the offense's right, because obviously if it was on the defense, this would be the left corner. But we played a right corner and a right safety, and we played a left corner and a left safety. So they stayed on the same side. So if we were in cover two, and that was our base look, is cover two, then what would happen is, is we tell them, Every time the formation comes up, you count. Count how many receivers are that to that side. So this would be one, two, three. So these two would count three. And we know that we want to play cover three against three receivers. So this safety would tell this safety, hey, we've got to play cover three because there's three receivers on my side. He knows he only has one receiver over here, so he would just tell the corner, cover three, cover three, and we would move it over, and this safety would drop down, and this corner would go back. Okay? So we have it in our system to be able to adjust to a three by one set. And we would do that even if this was a spread set, and we took and made it a three by one spread set, we would still do the same thing because as you see, Cover three is better with underneath coverage and deep coverage against three receivers, okay? But what we're doing with Trey Open is we are stressing the middle of the field and making them go from cover two to cover three. If they do, do not or have that or capability, then we're going to be able to take advantage of the tight end routes against cover two, okay? We would still like cover three, but we would also know that in cover three, we really like the box runs. So it's simple for us to be able to attack as an offensive coordinator, and it's simple to be able to teach the quarterback how to read these specific coverages and know which quadrants we want to attack. I want to go over run plays now out of Trey Open that I think can give you a good advantage when you're going to attack the defense in the run game. The first one I'm going to talk about is inside zone. And we always run, I always run inside zone down the midline. And I always run it to the three technique because I think that gives you the best angles to block the defenders. And it also gives you the ability to attack this open area in this A gap between where the shade is and where the three technique is. So I run the, the inside zone right at the midline and attack the three technique. Okay, so the right guard is going to step with his inside foot, left foot in this case, and he's going to attack the inside armpit breastplate. And as I've referred to, we like to keep defenders, particularly defensive linemen, in their gap. So we're going to leave him in the B gap that he wants to defend. All right, the center is going to step with his near foot, his right foot, into the A gap in case this three technique would stunt the A gap, then he would pick him up and they would just switch responsibilities. So that's why our footwork is so important with that, uh, regard to that, all right? He's going to step in the A gap with his right foot, climb and hunt the Mike linebacker. 
And hunt means we're going to take him wherever he wants to go. So that if he, if he ever pursues and gets behind this three technique, we'll just take him to the right. If he sits there, we'll just center him straight up. And if for some reason he, he goes to the backside, then we'll just attack that, that backside armpit breastplate and we'll take him to the left. So that's what hunt means for us. The left guard is going to scoop the shade and I never really care if he cuts his split down. I just want to make sure that he gets there. So there's some instances where I'll tell him, hey, just take a six inch split. I don't really care. And if they want to read that split, that's fine because we're just going to block him wherever he wants to go. So if he wants to aggressively run behind that center, we'll just wash him all the way down and the back will cut it back on the back side, which is why it's critical that on this left tackle, he does what's referred to as the 18 inch cutoff. And he's going to step with his right foot and make sure the five technique's not stunting that B gap. Then he will climb to the will linebacker and he'll hunt the will linebacker. So we do have the possibility of once this running back gets to the midline of staying in this front side A gap or cutting it all the way back. And so that's why we like to be able to, to be on the midline and give him that two way cut. Okay? Over here on the right side, the right tackle is going to go hunt the Sam linebacker and the tight end is going to step with his left foot in case the, the nine technique is stunting into that C gap and, and then he's going to attack the inside armpit breastplate and keep him in this um, D gap. All right. The running back is in front of the, the quarterback's toes are at five, the running back's heels are at four and a half. He waits until the quarterback touches the ball, then he shuffles over, keeping his eyes on this blocking scheme. He shuffles over, takes the ball, and he heads straight down the midline. So that's inside zone, okay? The, the advantage of doing that with a tight end is the fact that this backside defensive end, we have somebody to block him, okay? So in some particular instances, without the tight end, this would be a five technique and we block him. But, but we make that defensive end not able to crash on the back side, all right? I do not worry about this five technique. If, if he doesn't come, I, then I know he's playing the quarterback. So this five technique either has to play the running back or the quarterback um, with regard to that. So on the back side, these two guys, we can discern what their responsibility is and who they have when we run inside zone, all right? I always attach one of my pass plays to a run play, not because I believe in RPOs, because I don't believe in RPOs, and, and the reason I don't is I don't think the quarterback needs to be reading a defender to throw a pass. I think we can do that and we can tag that and tell him what's happening on the field so he can simply play and, and, and be efficient with that. So in this case, I'm going to tag the zero route. And so one of the things I want to do is I want to keep this safety from coming in the box and I want to keep this safety from coming in the box. So in a zero route, the X is running the takeoff or that's like an inside seam and that should get the attention of that free safety. If it doesn't, when he puts the ball into the running back's belly and this free safety, if he's already taken off and I know, and he's taken that, then I know that he's not interested in the run, he's playing pass. But if he comes down hard, then I'll watch that and then I'll tell him I'll run the same play, only I'll give it a play action designation and then we can tag and throw the X on the scene if the free safety is not going to help on that takeoff. All right? The other thing is we're running a slant here and so when you see this switch where the B's running a swing or a bubble and the Z's running a slant, that should gather the attention of this safety and that should keep these two guys from coming into the box when they're playing cover two. All right? Once again, I, I have the possibility to be able to watch how they play this, and if he's, if he's late or if he's not paying attention to the slant, I can always pull and throw the slant, okay? But, but I'm doing that as the offensive coordinator, and I'm watching how they play those routes, and then that gives me an idea of how, how, how to run my play action and tag that, okay? The second run play is counter. And we're going to run counter, and I've got this drawn up as cover three, because as I mentioned, cover three is probably the ideal coverage to play against this set. So we're going to attack the, the opening here where, what's, where the, the B gap is with regard to 
this mic, this five, and this shade have that open B gap that that mic has to defend. Okay. So when we do this, the center is going to block all the way back on the three technique, aiming that as inside armpit breastplate. And his job is to keep him in that B gap, not let him come to the midline. The left guard is going to attack the inside shoulder, put his face on the inside shoulder of this shade. So he's going to step flat to the ball and, and aim at that. And that allows the left tackle to, to attack the left shoulder or the upfield shoulder of that zero technique. Their job is to take the zero technique and put him across the midline because we want to run the midline. Okay? But the left tackle knows that once he takes the zero technique and gets him across the midline, his eyes as he's doing that are on this backside linebacker. So if this backside linebacker were to start coming fast flow to the front side of the play, then he would come off and block him. So his job is to, is to put the shade across the midline, and while he's doing that, watch the Sam. And if the Sam sits there, he just keeps taking that double team all the way over to the Sam. If he doesn't, he releases and blocks the Sam. All right? The right guard is what we call our pull and kick out. His path is that he's going to uh, take an open step and run downhill as tight as he can off the center and this double team into the line of scrimmage. So we want him across the line of scrimmage and then fan out for the five technique. This allows us to dig that five technique out if when this left tackle um, releases down flat inside, if he follows him real tight, we'll be able to dig him out with that kind of track. If you run this too far behind the line of scrimmage, then that five technique can wrong arm or log that and he can get up and under that pulling guard and make a play. So we're going to prevent that from happening by running that kind of track into the line of scrimmage. The backside right tackle is pull and paddle. And so what I mean by that is he pulls, he opens with his left foot, 45 degree angle. He finds where this wall is. And by the time he gets there, this wall should be over here. So this whole thing should be over here. And he's going to paddle down that wall and he's going to hunt the Mike linebacker. Okay? I was told this backside tackle who was pretty athletic for us because we knew that was his responsibility. Think of yourself as that fullback in the eye and you're going to pull, get in a position to run downhill and, and find the linebacker and just face him up and hunt him. Okay? Uh, the, the, the tight end on the backside, is, in this case we have a seven technique here. He's going to step with his, his left foot and aim for the inside arm pick breastplate and try to scoop that seven technique to keep him from running that down from behind. Okay? Same techniques with the running back. Wait till the quarterback touches the ball. Shuffle over. Head down the midline. Okay? And ideally, we'd like this track to be straight down the midline. We have had this case where this same linebacker comes over too far and he'll exit out that side. And then, once again we can exit out the front side. So we've had it where he's gone to the front side, we've had it when he's in the middle, and we've had it when he's exited out the back side, and it just depends on how, how they play it with that fast ball on the back side. All right? The route that I've chosen, and I always have my routes numbered, uh, uh, named by numbers, is the three route. I do that because I want the X to run a comeback, and I want him to gather the eyes of this will linebacker in this corner. And so as I, as I watch this running play, I can see what this will does. If his eyes are in, in on the handoff and he's going to get into that run game, his run position gap, then I'm going to pull it and I can throw some a route against that will linebacker that he might cover, which could be an out, a hitch, or something like that. If, and as I watch the corner, if I see that corner as he backpedals and he gives us this area in this 10 yard range, then I throw this comeback. I can pull and call and throw the comeback. So I'm watching this how I can get to that area based on how they're going to respond to that run play. Okay? Over here on this side, I want to make sure the strong safety doesn't come in into play with regard to fast flow or the free safety, so I've got a slant. If I see the free safety, when, he, when, he, we sit, when we put the ball in the belly of the running back, if I see him stop his back pedal and start to come over toward uh, help on run support, then I can throw the post. So I pick a pass pattern that's common to us 
that will attract the defenders in the secondary eyes and attack their technique of whether they're how they're reacting to run and pass and that gives me an opportunity to watch that on a run play and then throw a pass that I know is going to be successful play action. I've got three other run plays that I want to go over. This is outside zone. In this case what we're doing is if you're covered your job is to take the outside shoulder release and go to the second level the guy next to you is responsible for taking over the guy that you're co that's covering you so we're going to get basically a double and a slip to the, the Sam a double between the center and the right guard and slip to the mic and then the left guard is going to scoop the shade and then the left tackle is going to come flat and try to get the will linebacker this is a, this backside block is really difficult to get because that real linebacker is usually a better athlete and now runs the left tackle. Okay? The running back, once he touches the ball, will turn his shoulders and he's going he's gonna to run straight lateral to the line of scrimmage. And he's going to run off of this double team between the right tackle and the tight end. And that's going to give him his read as to whether he's going to be able to keep going outside or whether he might turn this back up. And if for some reason the three technique runs really fast flow to the outside zone side like this then he could cut it all the way back okay so nothing unique there but once again you've got one two three possibilities to make that outside zone cut all right i've chosen the two route to be able to attract this strong safety so he doesn't come flying down into the alley because in cover two, he's the alley player, all right? And that should have an effect on the strong safety and the free safety. To keep the corner out and the two out, my Z runs an out and up. In this case, he knows it's a run play, so he'll just run the out, but we also can see how he's going to respond to this out. If he plays off of it, I, have a, I can run the six route, which it, it tells him just to run the out, or if I need to, and he comes down hard, then I know I could run an out and up with the Z. All right. The next one is slant or shallow. If this wheel fast flows and we can't get him, then I know I have the opportunity to pull and throw that slant right where he left. So that's why I chose the two route. The other play that I like, and if you if it against cover three, and what I want you to see is, depending on the coverage. You have a couple options as to what run plays work really good against that, the coverage that they're going to play against the tray open. All right? Uh, sweep is the next play against cover three, so you see we like counter and sweep against that. And so what's going to happen here is now the, the, the tight end will block down on the seven. All right? The right tackle will block down on the three. Once again, we're keeping them in their gap. The right guard's going to pull. He's going to find the alley player and kick the alley player out. The center blocks back on the, on the shade. The left guard pulls. And he's going to paddle right around the seven technique and get any flow that comes over the top from the second level. All right? He could be the Sam or it could be the free safety, just depending on how they reacted to that. 18-inch cutoff by the backside left tackle. The five comes into the B-gap, block him. If not, go hunt the Mike linebacker. Okay? So it's just a typical sweep play. What I've chosen here, this would be our five route. And so what that means for, for our receivers is they're gonna, the B is going to run a hitch, and that should attract the strong safety to have him settle there and think that that could be a play-action pass. All right? The Z is going to run a fade in cover three that should take the corner out because he's got to go with that fade. And then we're going to run a speed out on M5. The X runs a speed out. And so what we want to do there is attract the attention of the will in the corner and try to keep slow them down on the backside. If they run, we just pull and throw the out. So I'm not having the quarterback read any of these passes. I'm reading them or somebody in the box is reading them and then we tag it as a play action. I think that's a lot more efficient way to do it. And what I tell people is, do you really think, particularly in high school, that you want a 16 or 17 year old kid who's got a girlfriend, 
who's got classes, who's got homework, who wants to drive, all the other things going on in his life, do you really think he can spend as much time studying as the coaching staff can or as the offensive coordinator can? So I think it's not, it does a disservice to, particularly at the high school level, but even at the college level, I believe that. That there's so many things going on in their life, and it's your specific job to, to, to watch the film and coach that stuff, that it's a lot better to do plaques than it is RPO, and then just simply blame the quarterback because he didn't uh, make the right read with regard to that. All right? Last one we have is trap, okay? And this is cover two. We, run, we can run trap. You can run these against anything, but we have uh, cover two drawn in this case. And so the center box back on the nose, the right guard immediately releases to block the backside linebacker. The left guard, or excuse me, the right tackle is going to go block the mic, and the tight end is going to go block the same linebacker. So we're going to let the nine technique go because he's too far out to make a play. Okay? In this case, the, the left tackle is going to do his 18-inch step, but he's going to definitely block the backside end. The running back shuffles over, and then he's going to head down the midline again, hopefully, but he, he's going to run as tight as he can off that center and under that, and then he could take that out to the right, depending on how this block goes. He might go straight, or he might cut it back, okay? In trap, you're simply going to run everybody off, which for me is the nine route, to keep them away from that. It's a quick hitting play, so we hope we get the, all the secondary players uh, backpedaling, staying in their backpedal, and perhaps turning their shoulders, so that when we bust the trap, we can get it to the second level real quickly. All right, so those are the run plays to give you food for thought on how to incorporate that with tray open. And then these are the pass plays off of those that you can run as either play action or you can run them as drop back. And I think you can be effective in tray open in doing those plays. So I want to talk about now about how to attack a defense using the tray open formation. And I wanted to give you an idea of how I formulate what passes I'm going to use by showing you the a template. In other words, I make a template of my passes that's blank within each formation, in this particular case, the tray open formation, that I'm going to consider using uh, to attack the defense. So what I have on this side is the blank formation tray open, and I haven't put the defense in yet. So as I was watching opponent scout film, I would go find tray open formation or something similar. If they didn't, if the opponent's film that I had didn't run this formation, I might look for just a trips formation, or I might look for a, a pro formation that had you know a tight end and one wide receiver, and then I'd have to interpolate where and how they would react to this formation. The other thing that I would know is that, okay, if they haven't seen that from an opponent, then when they see it from me, they're going to have to make new decisions in terms of how they want to play defense against this formation. So there are positives on both ends. Number one, maybe I can't find how they, as opponents that have played this formation, but number two, that means they haven't had to play against the formation, okay? So I've got a blank um, side or a blank sheet, and it looks like this. So that's blank. And then as I go through and scout, I put the defense in that I see or that I believe that I'm going to coach against in terms of um, where the secondary lines up, what front they would play, etc. Okay. Once I've determined what front coverage I think that the defense is going to play, I then look at how their defensive personnel might have to adjust to this formation, this tray open formation, or whatever formation I, I choose to use to, against that defense. So in this particular case, you notice that I have a 7 slash 9 and a question mark. And here's what, here's what I think the decision they have to make is, is how they're going to play this tight end side. Whether it's going to be a nine technique with the, tight, the 
defensive end on the outside shoulder of the tight end, or it's going to be a seven technique with the defensive end on the inside shoulder. And let me show you, take you through the reasons as to why I think that's a decision that they have to make. Let's start out if it's a seven technique, you're going to give this tight end a free release down to the middle of the field or into an area that's really pretty much uncovered, all right? And you're going to ask this same linebacker to cover him pretty much one-on-one -on -one or man-to-man -man because the strong safety in the corner are occupied by the two receivers that are out. And you notice that I always align the slot receiver in, right on the hash and then the, the farther wide out to the field is always in the numbers. Okay, so they're separated. They're totally separated from each other and they have to decide that. Um, I wouldn't necessarily like, if I was playing defense or, or coaching this defense, to have that tight end run up the field. And one of the things, the reason they would put the same linebacker inside of him with the seven technique, besides the help on the run game, is to also not make this free safety have to come over and help. So in essence, if they play a seven technique, you, I know that I can have my tight end one-on-one -on -one against that Sam linebacker, or I can create my pass routes to make that happen, all right? And that Sam linebacker playing inside with a seven technique lets him run, but it also puts him in a bind with the tight end. But it frees the, the free safety up, okay? So let's see what happens if they choose to play a nine technique, okay? This is going to make it easier for the same linebacker because we know that tight end is going to release inside the nine. And now that same linebacker can cover that tight end a little easier because we restricted that outside release. Because we know that if he tried to release outside that nine technique, that that nine technique should and would be taught to flatten him before he rushes up the field. Okay, so that's going to delay that. The thing that I think that happens now though is, if we ran this tight end straight up the field, even with the inside release against the same linebacker, if that same linebacker is not used to playing one-on-one -on -one and he's not used to rerouting the receiver, he's got to have help from this free safety over the top into the middle of the field, all right? We know that in, in cover two with this Mike linebacker, sometimes this Mike linebacker is trained to be able to play the middle of the field like that. And we understand that the same linebacker has also been taught to walk out and play flat, but how much is he taught to play one-on-one -on -one without a safety help? Sometimes against trips to the field, this free safety can be taught to read number three, all right? Well, if the, if the free safety is gonna help on the tight end, then he's not gonna be able to help in cover two with the corner with the X. So I believe when you put the tight end in a tray open formation, you put that free safety and that Sam in a bind with regard to how they're going to play that tight end down the field. And obviously, if you have a tight end that's, that's, that's a good receiver and is capable of running routes well, that, that's going to create a problem for those two players when that tight end is in a trips formation in tray open. So what I've done now is I've filled my template out with the 4-3 cover 2 defense versus my pass route combinations. And I, I label my pass routes with numbers. So this is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So I have basically 10 combinations that I run uh, as my core pass route combinations. And I run them out of any formation. So my receivers know wherever I put them, they run the route for whatever, whatever number that they have. And in this case, I use numbers. Some people use uh, words, okay? So what I do next is then I draw the route. So in the zero route, the X runs a takeoff, which is basically an inside seam that tells him to release inside the defender on him, okay? The W, which I label the, him as W because he's going to run my W routes even though he's at the tight end position, that's who he's taking. He's running a post, the Z is running a slant, 
and the bee is running a bubble or what I call a swing. So that's my route combinations for that. The A from the backfield is running a speed out. So that's my route combinations for that. And what I do is I would look and sit that route and go, hmm, I kind of like that route because I think this box looks pretty good for making that, if the corner chases, I can throw the swing. If the corner doesn't chase, I can get that slant route to that Z really well, all right? The second thing is, is I can like on a drop back pass, the timing of the quarterback reading the free safety. And if the free safety goes to the post, he can turn and throw the takeoff. Or if the free safety goes to the takeoff, he can throw the post because he knows the sand would be one-on-one. -on -one. In either case, we know we have this safety in a bind with regard to having to, in cover two, help the corner to the boundary. But we have a, a defender, particularly, I mean, excuse me, we have a receiver that's, that's uh, stressing the middle of the field with a post, all right? And in this case, we would tell him to run a skinny post. I wouldn't want him running over into the free safety. So I'm simply going to draw all the routes on there and go through each route as to what I would like, and then that would become a template. So I would just go zero, Z out, zero, excuse me, zero Z slant is what I would like on that play. And then I would tell the quarterback, hey, also in zero, we might go read from the W to the X and read the free safety. So that's how I would make my drop back passes out of tray open. And I'm going to draw all the routes in and then go through that as, and determine what my plays would be and how I would coach it in drop back formation. So what I've done now is, in determining what drop back passes I'm going to throw, I've drawn all of the route combinations, 0 through 9, that I have. And I've gone through and assessed, okay, just like I did on the 0 route, what would I coach on this and what would be the good throws for the quarterback? So for example, on the 1 route, I think this is a good one-on-one -on -one route for the strong safety versus my B route. I like that B because he, his assignment is to get to the middle of the field, all right? And if I release the A in to run this corner route, that would hold the free safety. So I have one-on-one -on -one routes. The Z is running a post corner. He has a corner route, but anytime you're split out and you're into the, the sideline, then you always turn that into a post corner, okay? So I'm going to go through each of these plays and assess what I'm going to attack with each route from tray open and who it is that I want the quarterback uh, to be able to understand that who we're attacking. For example, on the two route, when the X runs his slant and the A runs his swing from the backfield, that W is in a bind because if he takes off downhill to cover the A, then the slant's open. And vice versa, if he sits on the slant, then we can throw the swing and get the A one-on-one -on -one with the corner. All right? Um, then out here, I have one-on-one -on -one routes. I have a post with the B against the strong safety. And then the corner is one-on-one -on -one with a speed out, which can turn into an out and up, <clears throat> depending on how aggressive he plays that. So I'm going to go through in each of these pass plays and assess who am I attacking, what I like, and then that's how I'm going to make my, my chart as to what I'm going to practice during the week in terms of the drop back passes from this. What I want you to see is that you notice that we have the free safety in a conflict in the zero route. We have the free safety in a conflict down here in the four route because we have a post by the X, but the tight end is releasing down the middle of the field on his route, okay? Then we have a free safety on the six route in a conflict because we have a dig by the X. And once again, the, the W releases down the middle of the field. Okay. And then we have the, on the seven route, the free safety is in a conflict because the seven, the X is running a fade and the W runs a fade on that. Okay. So, and then down here on the nine where it's all go, the nine route is all go for me. 
you can see that the free safety can be put in a bind in one, two, three, four, five, minimum of five of the pass routes, we can attack the free safety and read the free safety, all right? That's what I think one of the advantages of is using Trey Open and having the tight end in there, is you can attack that middle of the field, and when people are overplaying two on one to the boundary, because X is my best receiver, then you throw in Trey Open, or you throw in what I, I talked about earlier, Twins Pro, where a tight end can be get down the middle of the field and attack that, <clears throat> then you've got an answer for that free safety in that corner, basically doubling your best receiver. The thing that I want you to know is that the assignments for the receivers do not change. If I tell them to run the six route, they run that their route no matter where I align them. So what is my responsibility is to pick formations that I like that stress the defense and then draw the routes and do what I just did and go through each route and say, well, what would I read? What would I tag? Should it be a play action? Should it be a drop back pass for that route? For example, if I look at the five route, and I put an X here is that drop back is probably not the best um, use of the five route, okay? Because the speed out, the corner will cover easy. The fade is one-on-one. -on -one. It's a long throw to the field. It's really a long route for this A to run his post route. So what I would do is say, okay, if I ran play action off of this, all right, then what I could do is I could have this tight end block for a second and then release out and now I can throw him a play action pass right in that area. So I can, I can adapt each play to whether I want it to be a drop back or a play action. I could still do a drop back if I wanted because I have this B with this strong safety if he's playing 10, 10 yards off and backpedaling. This quarterback could simply do a one step and throw it to the B on the drop back. So I could do a drop back or a play action, but that's how I would determine which one should be a drop back pass and which one could be a play action. But the key point is, I'm not changing routes for the receivers. They know what route to run on each of these, and they run it, and they get good at that route no matter where I put them. I change the formation, as you've seen, between Trey Open, Twins Pro, and 3x1 Spread, which, which changes what it, the route looks like, but it doesn't change the information for the quarterback or the information for myself calling plays. This is just how we make, how we're going to attack the defense with our passing game.